Hello, my name is Paul Horrocks. I'm a professor of molecular parasitology at Keele University, and I'm also a member of the medical sciences teaching team. So my current research primarily evolves around understanding drug action in the human malarial parasite Plasmodium falciparum. And a large part of that work is about understanding the dynamics of drug action. There's a real challenge for future antimalarial drug development in that we have to be able to find drugs that are not only potent, but also kill multiple stages of the life cycle of the malaria parasite, but also at least one of those components of the drugs will have to be able to kill the parasite quickly. And that's important clinically because when a child is brought into a hospital and they're very ill, we, one of the things, most important things we can do is get rid of the parasite burden as quickly as possible. And for that reason, we will need a drug or at least one part of that drug that will be able to get rid of that parasite biomass as quickly as possible. So the key to understanding how a how fast the drug kills the parasite is, is that you have to be able to monitor the parasite dying after you've added the drug. And this is actually quite a challenge for us with the human malarial parasite. There are a number of markers that we can investigate, but they're not easy to use necessarily. The most common one that we use to understand potencies is we look at the amount of DNA content. But DNA content is too stable for us to use for a time course assay or a relevant time course assay that would help us understand how fast the drug is working. And this is where the Firefly luciferase came in as being really useful because it's a very sensitive reporter, it's easy to use, you can use it in a high throughput system, but also it's dynamic. And by dynamic, what I mean is, is when we kill the parasite, it stops making the, t the luciferase reporter, and then, that, and then it starts to turn over the luciferase reporter, and there's no new production. And so the levels fall off quite quickly after the parasite dies, and we can monitor that, and we use that to make decisions about how fast uh, a drug kills the malaria parasite. So we use uh, a bit of a workhorse, it's the Glomax MultiPlus, it's been in the laboratory for several years now, and the reason why we enjoy, and we actually uh, love this machine, is it's, it's, it's multimodality. So I've got students working with bioluminescence projects, I've got other ones that use the fluorescence modules, and we also use these colorimetry modules as well, and actually it's, as I say, it's a real workhorse and many students use it. So much so, that we bought a second machine, so we also have a Glomax Explorer. So for us, it's about looking at uh, scaling our work to, uh, to look at larger libraries. We think our, the assays and the work that we're doing is at a point where it's ready that it can actually be used routinely in high throughput studies. I think the thing that we're interested in, though, is, is actually taking the assay and adapting it to understand what's happening to different parts of the life cycle because currently we understand what happens when we address and target the red blood cell part of the life cycle of the malaria parasite but there are other stages within the human body that we'd also like to investigate as well and it's about adapting the technology that we have and the assays into these other parts of the life cycle. Similarly, we're actually interested in taking the technology and the approach of using luciferase or bioluminescence reporters into different parasite systems and actually use them to actually scale up and develop drug assay platforms for those parasites.